I'm Eddie Cannell. And I'm Tom Cannell. We're the Mortgage Brothers team, everyone, and this is our podcast episode number 13. 13. Tom, yeah, what are we talking about this week? All right, today we're talking about third-party contributions uh, for purchase transactions, and third parties are defined as sellers, buyer's agents, and listing agents. So let's just talk uh, briefly about you know, what exactly a third-party contribution is and who uh, typically is the, you know, the primary uh, giver. I mean, typically we'll see the sellers. The sellers yeah. are going to be the primary third-party contributor on this. Uh, the agents sometimes are, but it's very limited and few and far between. So from a, um, a third-party contribution perspective, aka seller concession, let's talk about what, what, is, you know, what can sellers be allowed to help with? What what are okay. um, what are the things that they that they you know can do? There's basically what down payments they can uh, that 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 is a question, and then there's closing costs and prepaids. Yeah, so I think we see that borrowers have there's three types of borrowers who use you know let's just, let's just use seller contributions. So let's talk about the sellers. There's three types of buyers who use these type of contributions. It's the one, the first type of buyer is a buyer who doesn't, who has just enough money saved for their down payment, but doesn't have enough money saved for their closing costs and their prepaids, okay? So it is allowable for the seller to contribute money uh, towards the buyer's closing costs and prepaids. But, But again, it cannot exceed the closing costs and prepaids. The seller cannot contribute any money towards the down payment. Okay. Right. So, so no down payments. Right. They are not allowed to contribute anything to a down payment. So just a very big rule in your head. Don't mess with the down payment that needs to be earned and paid for by the buyers. Other than that, closing costs and prepaids can be um, paid for with using third party contributions. Yes. And okay. just to clarify, we're not talking about any gifts. A contribu- a third party is not your dad, right? I know that Tommy would mention that in the beginning of the podcast. It's not your dad or your mom. It's somebody in the transaction, like you said, like the seller, buyer agent, listening agent. So um, right. your the down payment can come from a gift from your relative, but again, not a seller, not a contribution. Okay. So, so, so you mentioned three scenarios. The first scenario you mentioned was from the person that was having difficulty having enough money to cover closing costs and prepaids. Yeah. They, they can handle the down payment, but they can't really handle the closing costs and prepaids. So that's when a seller concession typically comes in handy. What yeah. are the, the other two scenarios? Okay. So the first one, right, it, that, that was necessary. The second one is just the guy, a borrower has enough money for the closing costs and prepaids, but they just want to have the seller pay for them or pay a portion of them and just to kind of help kind of finance the costs. You, right? you, mean, you mean if I don't have 3000 or $4,000 out of my own pocket for closing costs and prepaids, I can take my wife on a vacation? That's right. That's good as, it, yeah, that's good as gold. It, it's good as cash, right? We, good so as cash. If you ask the seller to pay for $3,000 of her closing costs, you're not bringing in that 3000 at the closing. So it's, it, so the second type of buyer is someone who just, just wants to ask the, for the, ask for that seller concession just because they want. To, Cause they know, can't. Yeah. They, they can, you know, they, they can. Yeah. Okay. And what's the uh, third one? The third one is in the middle or in the very beginning of the, the buyer, the process of purchasing a home, you're, the buyers are going to do an inspection. So you're any, you know, anyone who's bought a home before has, done these inspections and there's probably a, a list of things that the inspector is going to find. And the seller usually is not going to want to fix all of them. What he'll do in most cases is just say, listen, I won't do the repairs in lieu of the repairs. I'll give you some a concession. I'll give you 1500, 2000 or whatever it is. You mean you won't fix my pool, but you'll give me cash instead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, and that's uh, very common that we see these concessions. Uh, in, in those three types. In those three types. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, necessity, because you can, and in lieu of repairs. So those yeah. are your basic categories. And if I can um, say um, on the uh, seller concession uh, portion is that seller concessions are not free. A lot of people think, ah, I didn't get a seller concession. Shoot. I didn't do a good job negotiating. No, if a seller ends up giving you a, a concession, it's because they're actually um, negotiating it as part of the whole transaction. 
Uh, so if a seller concession is nego negotiated up front, um, and originally the purchase price was going to be two fifty, if you likely ask for a two thousand dollar concession up front, they're likely not going to sell the house to you for two fifty, but two fifty two. So just don't think because you didn't ask for one that you know you walked away from free money. No, it's part of the transaction from day one. Sellers are too smart. Uh, yeah. listing, listing agents are, are good at what they do and they advise all their clients on how those concessions work. So I wanted to kind of get that out. All right, so um, they cannot be applied towards down payments. They can be applied towards closing costs and prepaids. Um, let's say, um, you know what, I, I want to have a great big, a uh, seller, seller concession, a seller credit. What, what typically uh, limits that? Can I ask for as much as I want? No, so you have to be careful because if you ask for more than the closing costs and prepaids on your transaction, it will be money left on the table. So you, yeah. Okay. Can I, can I use it to uh, reduce my loan amount? No. Okay. The, the, the rule of thumb is just no on that. Um, the, now, people will ask, well, what if I have an HOA? What if I get a home warranty? And I, and I increase my, my costs as much as I can to kind of absorb these, this large seller concession I can get. It's case by case. It's not always, you know, anything that's extra on top of the closing costs. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to just be asking your lender, what are my closing costs? And what are my prepaid taxes and insurance? The best estimate you can give me. So if, if it, um, the seller provides a $5,000 concession, closing costs and prepaids are 4,200, what happens to the other 800? I mean, I don't, I don't get that. They actually, they actually gave me a $5,000 concession. Yeah. Even though they agreed to it, that contribution is limited to 4,200 because that's all they can be applied towards. But can it reduce the purchase price? If, if there's time in the transaction, you can ask the seller. Now, sellers usually will say no. You know, right. if it, you either ask for it up front or not at all. Right. So when you ask for that seller concession, an important uh, phone call to make is to us to find out what we think are best guesses for closing costs and prepaids. And we'll never get, you know, gnats on because we'll always run a little fearful that we're going to potentially leave 100 or 200 or $300 on the table. So as an example, if we look at the borrower worksheet that we've sent you and we're seeing closing costs and prepaids of 4200 and you call us and say, hey, I'm going to ask for a seller concession. What do we ask for? We might say 4000 We might say 3900 we won't say 4200 and run the risk of potentially leaving money on the table because that there are a couple items uh, yeah. that, that end up coming into play that that potentially move uh, what what closing costs are what what are they the title company is going to do an aggregate adjustment at the end and they're going to calculate how much the proration for taxes are that the seller is responsible for and the insurance will be you know there'll be adjustments there and these adjustments are done at the very end so all of a sudden, if we give them a number too high, the aggregate adjustment could be a couple hundred, could be four hundred dollars, yeah. and next thing you know, it's giving it back to the seller. Right, right, okay, all right. So that that's important to know. Um, now let's get into. I think there's nothing else big we need to talk about, but we can yeah. run into right talk about, about the limits. Yeah, that's right. So wait, what do we have? Three different buckets. We have VA, FHA, mm -hmm. and conventional. That's right. So, so why don't you, you tell our listeners, uh, why don't we cover FHA and VA and then you can, you can talk about conventional. Yeah. So, I mean, 97% 97 of all loans that buyers are getting out there are going to be falling into these buckets. So if you're, if you're a VA borrower, you can, the rules allow you to ask the seller to contribute up to 4%, okay, of the sales price. If you are an FHA borrower, you can ask the bar the seller to contribute up to six percent. If and now conventionals, there's there's tiers in conventionals. Mm -hmm. If you are, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna do this first. If you are buying an investment property, be careful. Your contribution limits that sellers can give are limited to only to two percent. Okay, you cannot ask for more than two percent. And that's a big deal. We'll get, we'll get savvy investors that call us and end up getting into a situation where there's seller credits and that 2% you can end up bumping into, especially when you start throwing in discount points and wanting to pay for that too. Yeah. So the, um, okay, so let's, 
if a borrower is going to buy the house and you know, make it their primary residence or second home, and they're putting less than 10% down, the contribution limit is 3%. If they're putting 10% or more down, then it's the limit is 6%. So if anyone had a hard time following that, it just, hopefully that we made it, we made it clear enough. <laughs> so hit, hit rewind. Yeah. Uh, okay. And that is, uh, all those percentages are based on loan amounts or purchase price? A purchase price. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, that's, um, that's good to know. And hopefully everyone felt this was helpful at anything that we didn't cover. I'm, there probably was a couple of things in there that we didn't, but uh, gosh, just email us or call us anytime and we'll, we'll get back to you with that, you know, with whatever you need. Okay. Awesome. Time to go home. Let's call it a day. All right. See everyone. All right. See you folks. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Mortgage Brothers Show. Please let us know if you have any questions you'd like us to answer on this podcast. You can email your questions to Tom at Tom at azmortgagebrothers.com or yours truly at Eddie at azmortgagebrothers.com. And be sure to ask us for a free quote on your next mortgage. Tom and I will personally work with you and help you through the whole process. Signature Home Loans LLC does not provide tax, legal, or accounting advice. This material has been prepared for informational purposes only. You should consult your own tax, legal, and accounting advisor before engaging in any transaction. Signature Home Loans, NMLS 1007154, NMLS number 210917 at 161-8695, equal housing lender.